Here we go. So today we're going to be talking about the second of the two sessions for library onboarding for our school library staff. And uh, just a refresher, just a general refresher of, of uh, what services and supports that YRL offers. This one is mostly focused on collection development um, as opposed to the first session, which talks more about a general outline of um, all of the other supports that uh, that we offer in services like consultations and, and so on. So um, with that being said, I'm going to share my screen and we'll just get right to it. All right, so uh, as you know, and just to confirm, can everybody see my screen, my PowerPoint here? Christine? Yes, good. All right, I got a thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, this is uh, just an onboarding for anybody who's new and uh, for anybody who is more of a veteran library or library learning commons staff member in any of our school member libraries. It's just a little bit of a refresher. Uh, we do it every fall. Uh, there's two parts, but there's often new content that uh, that we add just because, you know, new things happen from one year to the next. So today, uh, here's just an overview of what we're gonna be talking about. So I'm gonna be talking about where to find the stuff, where to find the books. And I'm gonna uh, go through some online resources that I really like to recommend for um, reviews, for recommendations, um, really reputable, reliable websites and databases that are put together by the experts, by either librarians, by teachers, um, parent groups, that kind of thing, and um, you, you can really rely upon those those sites if you're really looking for some suggestions of what to buy um, for any part of your collection. Now, once you've looked to find those materials and you have an idea what you want, how do you get those materials? So we're going to talk about your funds, like allotment, for example. We're going to talk about the CCD tool, which is the um, one-stop shop for all of our libraries to order directly from. And if any material that you wanted is not available on CCD, then we have some vendors sites that uh, that we would like to make you aware of as well. And lastly, once you get or order those materials, what happens to them? Um, once they arrive at HQ, what happens to those books? So we're going to talk a little bit about how we catalog and process those materials, and then how we ship and deliver those materials to you. So moving on. Um, those resources I was talking about are right here. So these are kind of my, my top um, five that uh, there are more, but just to kind of keep it simple, these are some of, of the most um, just well-rounded, reliable online resources that I found over the years. And I use all of these quite a lot um, for creating selection lists uh, on CCD that you would actually be shopping from. Um, also for uh, uh, book lists that we include um, on our website or on the Track Pack app. So there's a variety of different places that I use them for, as well as when we have requests and questions about, um, I'm not sure what to order for um, grade seven through nine, for example, graphic novels. Um, what are appropriate titles? Um, and popular titles that are being talked about um, in the graphic novel circles. Um, and I'll hit up one of these sites or maybe multiple just so I can um, find some really great recommendations. So I'm going to go through them very briefly with you. And the first one I'm going to talk about is readbrightly.com. And I'm just going to pop over. Oop, new share, forgive me. I'm just going to go to my other screen here. And... I'm assuming you can all see brightly here. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Good. Got another thumbs up. Sorry. <laughs> my colleague is kind of like to my left and behind me. So forgive me. Um, brightly. I love the site so much. It um, is, as you can see, broken down by age groups. And I'm just kind of floating over this little um, toolbar here. And what they do is they break it down um, within those uh, demographic categories into themed lists. 
So it's um, updated pretty regularly, which is nice because of course there's a, just a high, high volume of um, titles that are coming out at any given time. So it's nice to know that this is always kept really current. Now that's not to say that they, they completely omit any of the older or more classic titles. It can quite often in a recommended book list um, on any given theme be a combination thereof of older titles as well as brand new. So just for, for fun, we're gonna go into the teen 13 plus. And you can see just by hovering over that, it's gonna show me popular topics. So they've broken it down into some genres as in uh, sci-fi and fantasy, mysteries and thrillers and realistic fiction. So let's just go into some sci-fi here. And from here, you can see that these are all basically, whoops, um, different lists of books on that particular theme. So with this one, for example, it's 11 mermaid books to enchant young adult readers. And if we click on that, there's just a tiny little uh, summary of, of what they're, um, why they've compiled this particular list of titles and then the list of titles themselves. So uh, you get a general idea as to um, the summary of the book. Um, certainly there's, there's links here to um, different retailers you can buy it from, but this is a nice site if you wanted to even just jot down some titles that you found. So maybe there's three titles in this list that you really wanted to order and you could always, um, once you've compiled your list, you could contact us um, either at askyrl at yrl.ab.ca and let us know that you would like to order these three titles written by these three authors and we'll source them for you and, and place an order. So so it's, it's just a nice site to get a little bit of an idea as to what's out there, what's popular, um, what people are talking about um, and what's getting a lot of attention, which is nice. Now, keep in mind, um, you know, six through eight can be a really wide range of, of reading levels within that, um, that grouping, particularly when it talks about teen, because it's just 13 plus. So you would have to dig a little bit deeper on other sites if you wanted to um, weed out, let's say you, you found some really interesting titles, but they're maybe not as appropriate for a 13 year old as they would be for let's say a 16 or 17 year old. So you would have to go to another site to, to find that information. Um, but I definitely uh, encourage you to explore Brightly or read by Brightly and uh, just check out everything that they have to offer, offer on this site. It's really um, quite fun just to go through. Uh, the next one I wanted to talk about is Imagination Soup. Um, also organized really beautifully, it, but how they break it down is um, at first in their top toolbars, either by, as you can see, picture books, chapter books, middle grade, and nonfiction. So if there really was just one part of your collection, again, it was just in, in picture books that you wanted to um, add some new content to, you could just go straight to that. Um, or if you were looking for a specific topic, as you can see, they have other um, narrowed down areas um, of interest just below that. So topic, age, series, or read alouds. Um, the read aloud feature is fantastic because that's something that uh, I've been learning a lot about that is obviously very um, frequently used in, in classrooms. And uh, I think a lot more than when I was a kid in school, which is great. So um, what they do is once you've actually popped into one of those categories is there's going to be a different list of um, different book lists. Um, there's going to be uh, articles on the subject itself. So again, either various topics. In this case, it's there she's talking about read aloud books and so on. A um, little bit of information about how to pick certain read aloud books and so on for certain age groups. And this information, I'm just gonna scroll up a little bit here, is coming from uh, Melissa Taylor. And as you can see, she's a writer. She used to teach, so she has that expertise and experience, which is great, and she's a literacy trainer. So definitely someone who has uh, a background that um, can make some really fantastic recommendations. I would definitely um, encourage you to explore this site a little bit, and especially just by um, popping around in the different menus. So especially these drop-downs, the book 
tropes by genre. Um, again, if you're not looking for everything, but something very specific and you know that you want mystery books, for example, then you're going to find a variety of different articles on different recommendations for books specific to that genre, which is really nice. Um, again, books by age. And this is where it's more specifically broken down. So instead of it being arranged from age four through six, you can actually uh, target a specific age, which is fantastic. And lastly, the playful learning. So if you wanted, again, to break it down a little bit more, but um, not by a very specific topic, but, you know, kind of an umbrella um, subject area, such as reading, writing, STEM, arts and crafts, and so on. So really fantastic site, again, updated on a very regular basis. And as you can see here, this one um, was originally pa uh, pasted, posted in May, but she's already updated it in, uh, in July. So, and that is uh, pretty common to see on her site. The next one I'm gonna talk about is the best children's books. And again, another really re reputable, reliable site for a whole bunch of different reasons. Um, and again, this is gonna have very similar offerings as, as compared to the other ones where, again, book lists. So, so uh, these are going to be a wide variety of different themes. And you can just see some examples here. Books by guided reading level. Um, granted, there are, you know, sales involved in this. So um, you're not going to be going here to order any books. Of course, you know, I'm not stopping you. Of course, you could order books from here if you wanted to. Um, but I'm just offering it up more as a, as a just a, a reference or a resource to, to go through. But again, there's all kinds of different ways that they break down their lists of books. So this one is by subject areas. So history, science, classic books, that kind of thing, grade level, uh, you name it. All kinds of different articles on various books, if you ever had time to uh, look around with some of those. Um, and these are not only gonna be you know a benefit to you, but you might find something here that is really I'm going to be useful for the rest of the, the, the staff, your colleagues at the school that you might want to share. And I'm just going to go back up to the top here briefly. And again, this toolbar at the top here. So you can break it down by subject area again. Um, not specific to curriculum as in Alberta, but obviously broken down into, um, you know, those general curriculum based subject areas like language arts, math, science, etc. cetera. Um, it's obviously an American um, site, but there's still gonna be some really valuable content there um, based on curriculums overall. There's guided re reading levels. I've had a lot of our schools that have made requests um, to find certain material based on a, a, a guided reading level. And there are many, many of them out there. So this may not contain everything that you're looking for, um, but it does give you a really beautiful uh, array of, of different guided reading level titles to choose from. And again, book list by topic. So I'm just going to click on there for a moment. And this is basically how this is laid out. As you can tell, it's very comprehensive. Um, it has a little bit of everything. So you're going to be able to find, let's see here, let's try courage. So best kids books about courage. So if you were looking for something um, along those lines and any of those subject or topic headings um, match what you were looking for, you can click on them and they'll give you all kinds of different really great recommendations. Uh, the next one we're going to go to is uh, Canadian. Yay. Um, not always a lot of Canadian reliable um, or popular content out there. So um, I have to assume that you're probably all really familiar with the Canadian School Library's website. Um, if you're not, highly recommend going to the site and checking it out for a wide variety of different content, um, not just library con content, but um, even just Canadian school content. But they have um, the most amazing information on here. And what I really, really like is just under their national projects tab is close to the bottom is their collection diversity toolkit. And as you can see here, uh, it's it contains um, a tremendous amount of information regarding how to build um, your collection that is more diverse and inclusive. Um, so you can see developing collections through an equity lens. Uh, there's just a tremendous amount of information here, but there's also at the very bottom, um, where did it go? Sorry. Or at least there used to be a book list here. Goodness gracious. 
Oh, there it is. Pardon me. So these little tiles at the bottom, um, if you wanted to click on any of these to learn more about, you know, diversity audits or equity informed weeding, if you're doing a big um, or even a little weed in your collection, feel free to read any of those. I would definitely recommend it. Um, but they also have these recommended book lists, which are super helpful. Um, if you're trying to, um, again, find really reputable sites where you can get great recommendations. And again, this is all gonna be a little bit more Canada centric, which is nice um, because again, sometimes our, our um, library collections do not contain as much Canadian content as they probably should. So any of these uh, links right here will give you the information that you need down the line to, uh, to find some fantastic Canadian titles um, for your school library. So the next one, and you can actually see they're listed right here. So this is one of the recommendations that um, they have within that list is 49th Kits. And it is a sister website to 49th Shelf, which is one of my favorite websites. Now this is um, a 100% Canadian content site. And what they did is, is um, before this used to just be a tab on their main site, um, but they've obviously had so much feedback and such uptick with their their kids, uh, the kids portion of their site is they created a whole site unto itself. And it has great information here. So again, if you're looking for book lists, and again, this is again, all Canadian content for kids. And as you can see, there's all kinds of different theme lists that they um, update on a really regular basis. So since the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation is coming up, you can see that they've added a list here of different titles, Canadian titles that you might want to consider adding to your collections or let's see here, fall releases, um, summer reading. Um, so there was books for pride month, indigenous history month, etc. And if I just go back up to the top here, now they break it down also again by age. So either preschool, early, middle or YA by category. Um, the book list again, and there's also a tab here for teachers. So I'm not sure if this is a site that uh, uh, your teachers are familiar with, um, but if you were to give it a browse and you find that there might be some information here that would be of value to um, your teachers in the school, please feel free to, to share this information with them. They might really find that there's some valuable information on this site. But I just love 49th Shelf. 49th Kids is equally as good. Um, highly recommend this site. And lastly, as far as resources go, is the Book Publishers Association of Alberta. So again, not only is this Canadian, but this is even, um, you know, kind of pared down to just our province, which is, which is great. So pretty self-explanatory, but more specifically what they have put together um, over the last couple of years is uh, Alberta Books for School Catalog. And this contains, uh, so it's an annual project um, from the association, and it matches Alberta published uh, books to the Alberta K-12 to curriculum. And I know that that's something that uh, um, comes up in requests frequently. So if there's anything that you were looking for that was curriculum-based that you wanted to purchase and add to your collection, um, this is definitely um, a go-to catalog for that. And we have it available in two different places. So it is currently... Um, it's actually two selection lists on CCD that you can fill a cart with content that's in those lists and place a direct order. It includes all of the books from uh, this particular catalog. And I'm just going to go to it specifically. And here we go. And what they have it broken down to is uh, four sections, elementary, secondary, and those are the two lists that I've created on our CCD site. So there's an elementary list and the secondary list. I didn't include the audiobooks or, or of course, the ebooks, um, but you're certainly welcome to go through the, those uh, on the site at any given time if you like. Uh, but what I've done is just taken all of the books in this listing, which this one is a K through six. Um, and these are the elementary titles that match to uh, the K to 12 or the, well, I guess it'd be K through six curriculum that are from Alberta publishers. So definitely worth a browse. 
if you are so inclined. And the other, the nice thing is, is I'm just going to go back to me for just a split second here, is this is the catalog. Um, you can actually hold it. It's not digital, which I know some people really prefer um, to be able to look through something tangible, an actual catalog. And we are going to be mailing a copy out to each of our school libraries here um, rather soonish. And they were um, very graciously donated to us and we're gonna get them out to you as soon as we can. So I'm just gonna get back to my presentation. Oops. And so, so again, back to Alberta Books for Schools. So that catalog that I just showed you, um, the titles are uh, not only just Alberta, uh, published in Alberta, and not only maybe connected to the school curriculum, but they are evaluated by the um, Alberta Library, which is we refer to as TAL, and they do undergo curriculum mapping. Um, educators and school librarians can search the database by curriculum, connection, grade level, genre, format, and language. And as I mentioned, these uh, the two elementary and secondary lists are now available on CCD. Now, once you've maybe found what you uh, want to purchase, how do you purchase these things? So we're going to talk just a little bit about funds and uh, what they are, basically. So first and foremost is your allotment. So that is um, uh, made available to you uh, at the beginning of each calendar year. And it, you can use that to purchase books and audiovisual materials for your library collection. Um, that money is based on your annual school population. And the balance, whether it's positive or negative, we hope that if it is negative, it's very, <laughs> very, very little, um, but it does just carry over to the next calendar year. So if for whatever reason you don't spend that allotment, that uh, balance out within that calendar year, whatever is left just carries over to the following year. Um, Bill Direct is another option for um, any library, really, whether it's public or school, where um, let's say you had a, a parent council that had raised um, some money for, um, for the school library and they want it to be used to buy uh, materials for your collection. So in that case, you could still put an order through us um, and let us know that you wanted to, to use Bill Direct or you wanted to be invoiced for those items. So as the material um, comes available, we would ship it to you and those items would be on an invoice and then you could make payment to YRL um, at that time. So um, there's other reasons why libraries use Bill Direct. Um, but it is available to you as um, an aside from allotment and over and above. If you'd already spent out your allotment, there might still be materials that you want to purchase. Um, and if you, you know, let's say had to get permission from your principal or um, whomever and you got in the go ahead and you had a budget, then you would just let us know when you're placing that order that you want to pay with Bill Direct. And lastly is the option of an allotment reimbursement form that we have available um, on our website. And uh, we'll provide that link to you as well um, in the follow-up email. But basically what you would do, so let's say you found something shopping in Walmart and you went, oh, the kids had wanted that book and it's only $5.99 or something like that. Um, what you could do is make sure you hold on to that receipt and you can submit it to us with that form. And uh, if you still have allotment in place, then you can um, basically re reimburse for that cost from your allotment. So it, definitely check out our website. And I think I show it in another slide if I'm not, or maybe I don't, but I think I can show you from there. But basically it's, it's, it's on the, the brand new um, uh, beautiful YRL website. So speaking of their website, this is generally what it looks like. Um, it would be available in this member libraries um, tab up here at the top. And I believe it is, it's actually in the public library section. Um, it's in that section. So if you were to click on any of these tabs, you would find it and it would, it would uh, be a link embedded in, in the text. So, but we're gonna move on to, you found the material, you know how to, um, how to purchase it with, with what funds. And so now 
where do you buy it? Where do you use that money to buy those materials that you want to purchase? And the first place that we would recommend is our tool that we had um, built specific for this purpose. So all um, our vendors may be represented in one form or another on this particular website, which basically provides a one-stop shop. So you can go there and browse any of our selection lists, of which there are, are many, many um, different lists. And I'll um, go through a little bit as to the differences between one versus another. Um, the discounts are amazing and uh, they actually display how much you're roughly getting um, on any given list. And there might be exceptions to that, but I'll explain that when I go to the site. Um, there's new lists frequently put up on a regular basis. Uh, the only thing you have to keep in mind, though, is it does not include everything. So the only titles that are available to purchase on CCD are titles that are included in those current selection lists that are available at that moment. So if there was something you were looking that was not included in any of those lists, you will not find it on CCD. And you'll have to um, source it from uh, either another vendor that we have um, or just another uh, retailer generally if we can't source it for you at all. So if you don't have a CCD account, which I'm assuming you probably all should um, by now, but if for whatever reason, maybe you're new staff and you don't, um, you're just learning about this now and you don't know how to find that information, we can either find if there was a, a, an account set up for your school already and just send you a password reset um, and so on. But you can always again ask, um, email askyrl at yrl.ab.ca at any time if you ever have any questions. But um, certainly if you need any kind of CCD support or you need an account, please email us at that address and we'll make sure you're set up. And I'm just, I think I can just go here, hopefully. Aha, I'm just gonna go to that page. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Okay, I'm just gonna thank you, Keeper, for knowing my passwords. Um, okay, so my view is gonna look a little bit different than, than yours will, so keep that in mind. Um, but generally, this is what you're gonna be looking at is um, these are all the different selection lists that are currently available. So there are some uh, lists that are up every two months, like the super forthcoming um, sales. So those are available um, in two month, um, period of time, I guess you could say, everything in, within those lists is 35% off, which is great. Um, so the new ones for October will probably be going up pretty soon, October, November, pardon me. Um, other lists that you will see up regularly when they are available is Hot List and Second Choice. And those are all pre-publication titles, the big, big bestsellers. And there's fiction and nonfiction as, as well as, as super forthcoming. Um, but you get 40% off of those titles. Um, other regular listings that you will see are um, if, for whatever reason, if you want, if you had large print in your collections, we have monthly lists for those, as well as video games um, and any of our audiovisual materials. So audiobooks, um, Blu-rays, DVDs, that kind of thing, playaways. So if you were looking for any of that kind of material, those are updated monthly. And then there's themed lists as well. And here are those two Alberta Books for Schools lists. So there's secondary and elementary, just at the top, as well as uh, just a, a timely list, getting students ready for back to school 2023. And again, these are um, updated on a pretty regular basis as well. So to use CCD, it's very, very simple. It's very similar to, i um, just gonna go, sorry, I should have gone into user, my bad. This is what it's gonna look like for you. Um, I would just go into one of uh, the selection lists if you were looking to um, browse through any of these. So we're in that Alberta Books for Schools elementary. And you can just see at the bottom here, it says allotments, um, Darwell School. So I'm just going to pretend that I'm Darwell School. But basically, um, I can, I have all of our libraries listed here, but yours would be listed at the bottom. And that's where you would basically be choosing um, what fund you wanted to use. So if you had um, two that were set up, then you would make a choice if you had a Bill Direct um, account set up. But for the most part, it's, it's going to be your allotment. There's not a lot of schools that use Bill Direct. And you literally just add in whatever your quantity is 
of that title into your cart. And once you have completed uh, your cart, and keeping in mind, this is a very brief um, summary of, of how to use it, but it really is no different than using something like Chapters Indigo website or Amazon. Basically, once you're finished with um, your selections, you can double check that, yep, yeah, this is what I wanted. I want these two titles. And it gives you lots of chances to turn around and change your mind. <laughs> so there's submit order. And again, this is where another chance where you can choose um, what uh, fund you wanted to use. So I'm going to say, yes, I want to use my allotment. If for whatever reason you, you needed a PO number, um, you can enter that in. If there was any notes you wanted to communicate to us, this is where you can do that. And you would just click submit order. And then it's going to ask you another couple of times, just giving you those opportunities to um, double check what you have in your card before you actually hit enter. Now, once you've completed the process of hitting it for the very last time, it does come directly to us. We receive an email. You will receive an email. We process the order from our end, and those books are ordered on your behalf. So that's pretty much CCD in a nutshell. Um, and I'm just going to stop for just a second. Are there any questions at this point? Oh, thank you so much, Christine. You're putting all the links in. Amazing. Oh, it was Penelope. I'm sorry. Not giving Penelope cred. My bad. Um, all right. So moving on, if there's no questions about CCD, and if you ever have questions again, um, by all means, please just let us know at askyrl.ab.ca and uh, we will do our best to uh, point you in the right direction here. All right. Um, there we go. Okay, so uh, as I'd mentioned, if there was a title that you were looking for that wasn't on CCD, um, one of our, our primary vendors is United Library Services or ULS. So you can set up your own account if you don't have one already on ULS. It only takes a couple of minutes. Um, it's literally up in the top right-hand corner of their website, which I'll show you in a moment. And uh, you can browse very similarly um, as you can in, oh, you probably can't see my, you can't see what I'm looking at, can you? Do, 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 pardon me. Uh, no, uh, that's what I want. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, you can use it exactly like CCD. Um, or again, very similar build to, um, you know, any retail site like Chapters Indigo or, or Amazon, where you put items into a cart, but where it's different with ULS is once you have made those selections, we want you to stop. We don't want you to actually directly submit the, the um, order or cart to ULS. We want you to stop at that point, email us at askyrl.yrl.ab.ca and let us know that you have a cart ready to go, that you would like to use allotment or bill direct. Um, we need your login information for ULS because we have to actually access that cart, your cart, and give us the name of the cart if you have multiple carts. And what we'll do is we'll log in as you. Um, we'll go and download the mark records from that cart into our ILS so that we can actually create a PO and submit um, those items to the vendor on your behalf. That way we make sure that we're getting the right discounts because you're uh, a member um, we're getting all of the you know kind of added perks again of being a member if there's laminated covers etc so um, in ULS different than CCD CCD you can directly order that cart that you have filled but with ULS plunk your items in the cart and then email us and let us know that uh, it's ready to submit and I'm just going to go there for just a moment uh, where am I all right I'm just going to Change my screen here again. Do, 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 do. Why can't I find you? There you are. All right. Um, so I'm already logged in. Oh, it's going to keep me logged in, but um, really easy to use site. It was updated about a um, year and a half ago. And um, what you do to once you've logged in. So right here, if you don't have an account, it would actually say register. And that's how you would set it up. It just asks you a couple of questions. And usually within about five minutes, you've got an account set up. 
from there, um, what I would recommend doing first is clicking on Manage Carts. And this is the Create a New Cart field. So this is where we're just going to call it Test. And I always have a ton of things in my in my cart list, but you would basically just go to your cart list. And you might only have one thing there, so it'll be super easy to find. And click it open so that you can actually see it up here in this little bar where I can see that I am in this cart right now. And from there, I can add um, items to it as I go along. So there's selection lists that you can go to. And again, some of the selection lists that we regularly upload onto CCD are directly, uh, or they come directly from this site. So you can see that that hot list um, and second choice, 40% um, off listing that I mentioned is here. Um, the super forthcoming catalog options are here, et cetera. But there's also, especially for the children's and YA and any educational resources, there's some great selection lists here um, that again are, are dated on a really regular basis. And these are put together by the, the experts at United Library Services. So they have people that, that curate these lists. Um, so great go-to to see what they have added to any of these given lists based on a variety of different themes. It is a big site, <laughs> so sometimes it takes a little bit to load. Um, but as you can see here, here's the uh, ALA Youth Media Awards. I'll give you a little explanation as to what they are. Um, there's 104 titles in this particular listing. And from here, so you can see again, I'm in my little webinar test cart. It would just, And you can also see that it's also listed here. So again, if you had multiple carts like I do, um, you would just want to make sure that you're you're checking that you're in the right cart if you have multiple carts because um, I've done that before where I've been adding things happily uh, to the wrong cart and then I have to go back and fix that. So um, you just add whatever quantity of that title that you want and add to cart. So let's say that was the only thing that I was looking for. I'm just going to click on it. And this is where you can do a couple of things. You can print the card out if you wanted a uh, record for your files. You can uh, basically transfer all of this information into a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet, if you wanted to do that, again, for your records. Um, but from here, if you were, if it was ready to order, this is where you'd stop if you didn't want to do anything else. Um, and you would email us again at askyrl.yrl.ab.ca and just, again, let us know your login information for ULS what fund you want to use, probably allotment. Um, if there's a name for a cart that, because you have multiple carts, let us know what that is and uh, that it's ready to go. And we'll uh, we'll process it for you from there. So if you have any questions um, about that, please let us know. And again, you can always reach us at that email at any time to, so we can answer your questions uh, more specifically. And I ho I'm hoping that you can actually see my um, PowerPoint again. Okay. So can we? Can you see my PowerPoint, Christine? Yay. All right, forgive me. Um, so now we're just gonna be going into uh, the alternatives. So that's the audiovisual materials and video games. I'm not gonna go through their, their sites because uh, they're sometimes not always super user-friendly. Um, and it's not probably a uh, type of format of material that you're looking for a lot, but if there are, um, a, a, if there's a video game or if there's an audio book or something along those lines, or even a music CD that you wanted to purchase for your collection, then please let us know, just email us. And we have two really fantastic vendors that we can source that information for you. And we won't put you through the torture of going through um, setting up accounts on their sites and browsing and all that kind of thing. Just put it in the body of an email of what the format is that you uh, would prefer. So again, if it was a DVD, give us the title of the DVD um, and what fund you wanted to use. And we'll just source it for you. Um, we'll give you a, a quick callback just to say, we found it, it's this much, is this okay? And then we'll go forward with your order from there. So, and next we have what happens to the material once it's been ordered from the vendors and then it makes its way back to um, YRL headquarters uh, once it's uh, been shipped to us. So what we do from there is uh, the cataloging process. Um, so we create 
um, if the records are not already created, we create MARC records or bibliographic records for those items. Um, and then the processing takes place. So once um, they've been attached to a bibliographic record or a MARC record, then we do some processing. And it can vary from school to school, depends on what your preference is. Um, if you've informed us of that, that if you wanted um, the spine labels printed and or attached to um, the material, if you wanted a track barcode added um, to the book, um, as well as your school barcode, for example. So you would attach your school barcode, but we can also attach a track barcode. Um, and then again, at any kind of, like if, if it's a picture book, for example, that had a book jacket that was laminated, we'll also fix those books jackets to the actual book itself. So um, it keeps it well protected and, and uh, in the best condition it can be for as long as possible. So from there, that's when we start the shipping and delivery process. So for both new and processed materials, uh, we will arrange a delivery date with you. So um, we generally do school deliveries once a month. Um, and there's various criteria that determines as to uh, when it is during that month that we would actually make that delivery to you. If it was a van run, for example. Um, so we'll be in touch uh, via email to say, um, hey, we've got two boxes of new books that are going to be coming your way, and they're going to be delivered on this date. Um, with that, if you are with Northern Gateway or Pemina Hills, we would send you the MARC records directly so that you can upload them into your ILS. If you're with Wetaskiwin School Division, uh, we send them to the School Division, and they upload them for you. Uh, if you had materials in your school that you wanted cataloged and processed. So maybe again, you'd purchase those at, at a book fair or they'd been donated or something along those lines. Um, and you wanted them cataloged and processed, you can always send those in to us and we'll take care of that for you. You just need to email, ask YRL, again at yrl.eb.ca and let us know that you have materials to be picked up. And again, we'll work out a, um, a date to uh, pick those up for you. Um, and again, we provide those MARC records for the materials, and that's both for new and process only. So those existing materials that you have, if you just need records and processing done, um, as well as shipping and deliveries, uh, that also involves any of the kits that we have available that I talked about briefly last week, um, any interlibrary loans that you had, or any curriculum support materials um, that you had requested. So we may, depending on, on the volume uh, of those um, materials, with kits, it, it's also not something generally we can throw in the mail. So those always require a van run delivery. Um, but if it was only a couple of books, we'll probably mail those to you. Um, when materials are mailed to you, uh, prepaid return postage will be included um, to return the materials and that applies to your curriculum support um, requests. So if you wanted, two copies of a novel study because you had 30, but you need 32. And I've been able to find um, two extra copies for you. We'll mail them off to you with that prepaid return postage. And then you can just um, send them back in the mail to us. And that's pretty much it for today's presentation. I'm just kind of curious if you have any questions. It's so quiet. <laughs> No questions. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to leave it here then. And you all know how to reach me. That's for sure. Um, a lot of us talk on a regular basis, which is wonderful. And if you ever have any questions about any of this or anything else, um, please uh, just email us at that ask URL email address. And uh, We'll point you in the right direction and get you the answers that you need. So I hope this was helpful and uh, we'll be talking to you or seeing you very soon. Have a great day. Bye.